This time on the show, access your cloud via Explorer. Mubix joins us to talk writing programs in Autoit and a few of your tips and questions. All that and more this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to this episode of Hack 5. My name is Shannon Morris. And I'm Colleen Henry. And Paul right here. Eyes. Yes. Not, not the boobs. There you go. See? Two girls taking over the show. Colleen, what's up? Not much. Just trying to get Paul to actually focus yeah, no kidding. on the Dude, boobs. quit being a dude. Come on. This is like the fourth take. We're I trying think. to freaking teach people things about computers and stuff. And you're back there just Help moving computer. around the camera. Me, 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 me. <laughs> G.I. <laughs> Joe. G.I. Joe. Okay, we've been talking about memes all day. I'm so sorry. But we have tons I in store totally for this episode. We always start with a gift. Okay. Are you excited? That depends. Is it a good gift or a bad gift? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> all right, it's a huge box. Oh. Okay, let's see what's in here. It's like kill my laptop. It's a Toshiba. Oh. What is this thing? Dude, oh, it's, it's an a old Toshiba satellite, satellite laptop. My dad Ew. totally had one of these when I was really little. Really? This was the first computer. Awesome. Okay, we don't I need all the cords. Ever, this is the first laptop I ever used. <laughs> That's I awesome. I played Doom on this. And Did it had, you really? It had a, like a dual scan screen, wow. I think. And if I remember correctly, um, it might not have been his laptop. It might have been like my first laptop that was mine. But whenever I played Doom, like you couldn't even see it when it moved. It was just like... <gasps> <laughs> the refresh rate was so bad, That's and then as awesome. soon as I got an active matrix, I was like, whoa, active matrix, only in psychedelic <laughs> colors, man. Okay, and this one, I'm a little afraid to take this out of the box because it might disintegrate in my hands, but this is, is a Zenith Data Systems laptop, and it looks like somebody took it outside with a they look like, machete and it's like they, they went, went office to town. space on it. <laughs> it's very office space. Okay, so this well, is you from... don't actually have to send us all of your broken computers. <laughs> you can send us well, working ones. Like, I can turn this into an SSH somehow. terminal. A very that's a good a idea. Very nostalgic SSH. Yes, terminal. we should totally do that. Okay, so this was from Charles. He said, "I've been watching ever since season one. Have enjoyed all Better the episodes me. along the way. Me too. Keep up the good work. I was cleaning something out at work. Came across these laptops with your love of all things old. Hey, I take that to heart. Okay, I would sh love to share this with Not you. Not joking about old sweaty balls. <laughs> Maybe once you build your BBS, you could use these to connect and feel Beautiful like you are back in the 80s. Exactly. I can't feel like I'm back in the 80s. I don't remember the 80s. Do you remember the 80s? I live I remember I lived in Alaska in the 80s and I remember there was like a mountain down the road and I remember my kindergarten. That's, That's not a place. About it. My qualifications is if you can remember a rating. Um, I know. Who's yeah. Reagan? No, I'm just kidding. But I'm joking. The, the one thing I do remember about the 80s, of course, is... <laughs> yes! Oh my god! Dude, she's truly, truly, okay. truly outrageous. That's amazing. So, what's up, Colleen? I haven't seen you in like a month. How was uh, your Christmas? Was it Christmas good? Christmas was good. Yeah. Um, you know, spent time with the family, as good. is required. Me too. Better yes. than expected. Vacation was awesome. Uh, Paul came, still... which was great. Oh, yeah, I heard. Yeah, that must have been weird, having yeah, Paul there. He was hitting on my sister, oh, though. Oh, you, ooh. You go, Paul. Yeah, right there. I'll be your wing woman. But she had her boyfriend there, too. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're so He's all wrong. grinning in the back. He's I'm all like, yeah, I'm making this, so... I'm making this stuff up, and he's like, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Good job, Paul. Keep it up. Call her sometime. Yeah. Sometime. So I went on vacation too. I went back to Missouri for like a week and a half. So <laughs> the hack shop's back online now. I'm shipping every day, daily, like I should be. And um, Darren's still in Virginia. I have no clue when he's coming back, but hopefully I'll be, be back next week. Back yeah, I'm pretty sure next week. Somewhere but, he'll be yeah. back. So this week I am talking about cloud service. It's a a, cloud it service. services your clouds? Yes. The, so you take what are they called? The thunderstorm like clouds change. and stuff uh, like cumulus? that. Yeah, cumulus clouds. Why is it that every cloud is a silver lining? I have no clue. You know, you can see clouds when you're in your plane. Yeah, down. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. And what you are later. you talking about, Miss Green? Um, so I I didn't do a segment this week, but Mubix <sighs> is standing in for me, and he's going to actually be 
showing us how with auto it, you can, with like 12 or 14 lines of codes, do something extremely nefarious and fun. Ooh, mm, we love nefariousness. Wrong. All right, coming up soon, we're gonna be talking to Mubix, so stay tuned because in just a bit, I'm going to be checking out some of my favorite software. Now let's jump over to Mubix, see what he's got going on. What up? Oh yeah, cool it, man. Domain.com, they're owning the competition with cheap domain names and no hassle service. And our Hack5 fans are making Domain.com one of the fastest growing domain registrars in the world. So whether you're setting up a website to show off pictures of your cat or brag about your new boning skills or something more business related, Domain.com is the place to buy a domain for your new idea. And Domain.com offers easy checkout process, making it simple to find your domain name and set up your website with no hassle. Domain.com's domain discovery system quickly shows you the available names, making it easy to select the right extension and uh, you know you can get yourself a sweet com or even a .co and save a character. And if you already have a domain somewhere else, it's totally cool. Transfer it to Domain.com for only $7.61 and get an extra year for free. See the guys at Domain.com are such huge fans of Hack5 that they want to hook up our fans. So if you use the coupon code HAK5, you get an extra 15% off your next domain purchase or transfer. So that would be like $6.47 for a transfer. So ha, don't forget, when you think domain names, think domain.com. Hey guys, welcome to this segment and we're gonna be going into keyloggers a little bit. Now, everything you ever wanted to know about hardware or software keyloggers can be found in Iron Geek's website. He's done a number of presentations on them um, from the good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, and the hardware and the software. So I can't really expand on that any further other than to tell you to go there. But what happens when the person doesn't use his keyboard to type in his password? For instance, let's go to the screen and look. Copy. Paste. Hack. Five demo user. Now, if I had a keylogger of any kind, all I would get is his username, and that's pretty useless to me. I can get that in other ways. So, what happened there? Let's reverse real quick. I copied and I pasted. So, what kind of keylogger do I need? Clipboard. So the clipboard is pretty universal. It can take binaries, it can take, you know, whole folders, it can do just text, all kinds of stuff. But we're really only interested in just the text, right? So for my purposes, I'm going to show you, or I, I chose Autoit. Now, Autoit is a really, really cool scripting language in a sense that it is sort of between C, the scariness of C, and Python and Ruby. So like Python and Ruby is great, but when you compile them into binaries, what happens is they get ginormous because they have to have the interpreter with them. Whereas with C, you can get really tiny binaries, but you have to go through manually do all, let's just save that off to some other day. All right, so but auto it's right in the middle. So you get small little binaries and it's a little, uh, a little bit like C as you'll see with our includes and stuff later on, but um, has some of the cool easiness of the object-oriented languages. All right, let's just jump right into it. We've already installed Autoit, which is next, 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 finish. So I'm not going to bore you with going through that. But we'll be going down into our Autoit folder and site. Now, site is um, one of my favorite editors of all time, even before I knew about Autoit. Now, uh, site has all kinds of features, including like um, highlighting, like source highlighting, and all kinds of fun stuff. The thing that it has when it's included with Autoit is to compile and to build and to go or run scripts. Now, let's start off with a real easy script. Let's do the Hello World. So, all I do for Hello World is simple. I do a message box. The reason I do a message box is simply because Autoit doesn't have a print feature. You can either write to the console, 
or pop up a message box. And in this case, I just want to pop up a message box. That way you get a visible cue instead of trying to look at the bottom and see, yeah, what he's saying is right, it's there. So let's go with the message box. And the flag, the great thing about AutoIt is it shows all the you know options for each function that you have. We're going to say zero just so it's an okay box. So you can mess around with the different numbers there and see what it is or look in the help and figure out what they are. So let's do a title of first program. Ta da! All right, next is the mandatory hello world. And that's it. So we go save because we got to save it somewhere. Let's do hello world. Tools, go. And we get a nice, awesome pop up message box. It says our first program in hello world. So we're, we're graduating real quick out of that and we're gonna go straight into our key logger or clipboard logger. So first of all, we need to look for in the help file, something called a UDF. Now a UDF is a user defined function. These are functions that, or libraries for AutoIt that have been created and compiled for, or not compiled, created for use for anyone but submitted by the community of AutoIt, which is awesome. They have tons of things that you can do. Now, the thing that caught my eye initially was the clipboard management. Clipboard management makes it dead simple to do what we're gonna be doing. So we go in here and scroll down. Now you can look in and kind of get the sense of it. You can open a clipboard, close a clipboard, set viewer, clear clipboard, but what we're interested in, get data. Now there's a get data extended or EX, that gives you a handle to different, uh, if, there, it's, if the clipboard uh, type or format is anything but text. Now we're only interested in text, so, and this is gonna make uh, our code a lot simpler just because um, the simpler version gives a zero anytime it's not text. So we can easily just negate anything or ignore anything that's a zero. All right, unless their password is a zero, which I don't think it will be. All right, let's go. So what we need to do is include clipboard.au. So let's start with that. Include clipboard.au3. All right, next we need to do this underscore clipboard data, get data, and that should be it. So let's make a variable. Let's say clip. Just for an example. Now in AutoIt, the, the variables are started with a dollar sign. So dollar sign clip equals clipboard, and we can just scroll down data. And we're gonna see, just say formatting is one, just for text. That's all we want, right? All right, great. We hit go. Oh, we have to save it first, sorry. So this is our clipboard. Keylogger, hit go, and it looks like it worked. Um, but it's in a variable, we haven't done anything with it. So let's put it in a message box. Message box, oops, msg box, do, 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 zero flag, title clip or data. And let's just put our variable in there and save and hit go again. Ta-da, it has a zero. That means there's something in there other than uh, text. So let's select just random text, copy, and hit go again. Ta-da, look at that. Now we have our clipboard keylogger in three lines of code. But we're faced with a couple problems just right off the bat, right? Um, one, it pops up this nasty message box that we want to get rid of. Two. Um, it doesn't log it anywhere, and three, it only happens once. So let's let's code kind of around that. Well, we got to write this message box, and for just debugging purposes, I'm going to comment it out so that I can easily comment it back in if I want to check and see if anything's if everything's working. And very simple way to make it continue forever is a while loop and while one means while one equals one or while true. That means it will continue to go around and round and round and round forever. All right, so W end is how you end a while loop. And just so that my coding uh, instructor from high school doesn't kill me, we're gonna do proper tab completion or tab indenting. All right, 
So now, right, right now, our code will simply go over and, and make our variable whatever's in the clipboard data and make it really fast. So we're going to just add a sleep in there just so that we aren't eating up 100% of the CPU usage. That is not very stealthy. All right, so our delay in milliseconds, 100. 